Hey, good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel. Well, after a bunch of morning showers, the sun's starting to take over. Catching great power. So, the best of both worlds. Got the water tank full, now we're getting the batteries full. Perfect. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about just how easy it is to do refrigeration and freezing on solar power compared to the old days when we did used to just shy away from these type of components. But a lot has changed over the years. So now instead of the old heavy compressor type refrigerators that used to just draw a ton of power which made us stay on propane refrigeration. You know, they've got these inverter compressors now for these type of units. They're not very expensive. They draw very little power. That full-size refrigerator freezer there, when it's cycling on, is between 50 and 70 watts, depending how warm the day is how many times you're opening and closing the door throughout the day. But the most you ever see is about 70 watts. That little five cubic foot freezer, when it cycles on, only draws about 50 to 60 watts. Now, when I say that this draws 50 to 70 watts in normal operation, it does once every 24 hours run an auto defrost mode, and it does go up to right at 200 watts for about 20 to 30 minutes. So I've had a few of you tell me I could disable that. I choose not to. I like having that thing be auto defrosted. It keeps the refrigerator and freezer in just perfect condition and the system can easily handle those 200 watts for that 20 to 30 minutes a day and then you have absolutely zero frost buildup in that. So other than that, yeah, the regular cycling in a 24 hour period is just between that 50 and 70 watts, except for a half an hour every day where it runs about 200 watts. Still super, super efficient. And here's a view right now. The refrigerator is on, drawing 52.2 watts. So you can see just how efficient that this refrigerator is. And this will cycle on and off throughout the day and night. And this is just about typical. I mean, it's about 80 degrees in the house right now, little, little less than that, 78 probably. So fairly warm. Uh, it's been opened and closed many times throughout the day, letting some of that cold air out. But there it is running, drawing 52 watts unbelievable very efficient and that refrigerator is tied up to just one 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery and as it's running and charging you can see there's more solar coming in than we're hitting this battery so you know 81.9 percent full and charging, and you can tell by that little up arrow indicator that 50 watts on the refrigerator, not even touching the battery. And I have 500 watts of solar tied in for this particular unit right here. So gaining even while running the refrigerator. So it'll get up to 100% full today. And then overnight, as the refrigerator keeps running, uh, y'all wake up in the morning and it'll be in the mid 70 percentile of charge. And as you can see, it's, you know, 82 degrees in here. And maybe just a couple of degrees cooler where the refrigerator is. So I qualify everything uh, from 30 years of living off grid and living on solar completely. 
And in the old days, like I've said before, it just wasn't really, you know, efficient to run a full-size refrigerator on solar because all we had was lead-acid batteries, old compressor-style refrigerators that drew a lot of power, and everything was much more expensive. Solar panels, batteries, everything was much more expensive. And you had to build a huge system to have refrigeration. I knew people that did it, but you had to have a heck of a battery bank and a ton of solar to where it just wasn't any more cost effective to switch over from a propane refrigerator, which is what we all used off grid back in the day. But those days have changed. So I keep uh, wanting to reiterate these facts that solar components have dropped in price considerably over the years, as well as the refrigeration technology has increased to uh, such a degree that you can run these things very efficiently on a very small solar system. This is a small solar system, 500 watts of solar, got your 2000 watt inverter, charge controller of course, all the components, and one battery. And same thing on the a sub-zero storage. This uh, freezer right here is just a little five cubic foot freezer. Everything in there is at minus five degrees right now, so just frozen solid. And it's on right now and it's drawing about 50 watts as well. Very efficient. And again, I have just one battery on a separate system running that. And this is the one battery. This is that 48 volt, which some of you will remember from Power Queen. It's just a fantastic battery. And same thing. Now on this particular battery, I have 700 watts of solar tied into it. It's drawing 50 watts right now, and you can just tell it's on its way to a completely full charge here very shortly. And ideally, I really should switch over this 48 volt system to run the refrigerator, but I have such an excess of power this time of the year, uh, I just haven't done it yet. But when the sun starts dropping down, I'll just reverse these systems, plug in the refrigerator to that, to this one, and the freezer to the other one. So here uh, in this cabin, these are the two biggest power draws by far in the entire setup here. They draw power 24 hours a day. They are never turned off and there's always ample power stored in the batteries to run them 24 seven. And whatever is drawn down overnight <clears throat> is quickly replaced when the sun comes out in the day and I'm over paneled as a lot of you will remember, to where even on the shorter, darker days where I'm not getting a lot of power, I still have enough power to sustain these pieces of equipment. Now there's nothing else in the house that draws this kind of power throughout any given day. You know, all the technology has changed. You use nothing but LED lights in here. They just draw a few watts. So can light up the entire cabin with what one incandescent light bulb used to take. <laughs> so again, I, I always qualify everything by going back to the old days of what was available to us where one LED light, back when I'm talking about, literally cost like 90 bucks. Now you can buy a six pack for like $9. So things have changed and things have changed for the better. All great reasons to go solar, at least in my humble opinion. Yeah, that doesn't cost anything compared with what it used to. And we were very, very thrilled back in the day to run everything we could on solar, but even the TVs that we were running were the big old TVs. They drew a lot of power. And now everyone's got LED TVs. They just sip on the power as well. Like this light right here. That's drawing six watts of power and it's lighting up the whole uh, kitchen area at night. So have these sprinkled throughout the house or at least these kind of lighting 
components. They're not touching the system at all. So a lot of you that are solar curious, build yourself a small system. If you've got an efficient appliance, plug it in. And you'll be bitten by the bug. Beautiful day. Be your own power station. <laughs> Aloha, everybody. <laughs>